The title of today's message is No Peace for the Wicked. No Peace for the Wicked. There is no peace, says Yahweh, for the wicked. That is something we read every now and then from the book of Isaiah 42, verse 22. There is no peace, says Yahweh, for the wicked. Now, let's look at the book of Genesis and Micah. These are two books that come from giant writers, prophets. Moses was called a major prophet. He was a leader. He knew it. He was with Yahweh. If you say anybody has seen Yahweh, but, but we know it's Yahshua Messiah. It, it was Moses. He saw it all. He knew it all. And also Micah. Micah wrote expressly from the spirit of Yahweh. And he spoke the mind of Yahweh to his people. Even in the days of Israelites in their land. And also in today's Israelites that are in diaspora across the world. Now, the message came from Isaiah as well as Micah, as well as Moses, as well as all the prophets of Yahweh, saying to Israel, if you do the will of Yahweh, if you obey Yahweh, if you live by the counsel of Yahweh, in the status of Yahweh, in the judgment of Yahweh, in the commandments of Yahweh, in the law of Yahweh, if you obey and follow the ordinances of Yahweh, you will have peace. You have peace to yourself. You have peace in your land. You have peace wherever you go. You will be heard. You will not be tell. You will aspire far greater than anybody will think of you. And even far greater than you can even imagine. Then, if you will not go the way of evil, if you will not live life of wickedness, peace and peace will follow you and you will live in safety in your land. That is basically what all of them are speaking about. Leviticus 26, Moses spoke about this so much that if you live the upright life, the way that Yahweh commanded, you will receive blessings, plenty blessings in the land. You will be heard. But if you, if the reverse is the case, if they refuse to obey Yahweh, so they are going to get it hot. They are going to be thrown to the enemies, into the Gentile world, and they are going to be dealt with. They are going to be defeated. Now, Genesis chapter 3, Moses is telling us what happened there. That was where human beings, mankind, Adam and Eve, our first earthly parents, that's where they lost what is called peace. Once somebody loses the presence of Yahweh, once somebody removes himself or separates himself from Yahweh, the person goes or walk away from his peace. Yahweh is peace. Just as we hear that Yahweh is love, if we remove ourselves from Yahweh or cause ourselves not to obey the word or the voice of Yahweh, then cause follow. And that cause is, it captures so many things, really. The cause that follow disobedience captures so many things. It captures all manner of damnation, all manner of evil that will go against the person. It captures in, in including peace, eluding the person, affliction, trouble, sicknesses, pestilences, and consequently, death. Now, Adam and Eve fail. If we read Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 19, that explains 
what happened between Ad Adam and Eve. How Yahweh in chapter 2, 16 and 17, called them, keep my commandments, keep my law, keep my word, live in goodness of Yahweh, in righteousness of Yahweh, live upright way, don't turn yourself to evil. And the landmark was, said, do not eat from the fruit of the tree that is evil. If you eat from it, you will turn yourself to evil. Don't know evil. Don't go the way of evil. I, I, I presume Satan was hearing all these warnings. Satan knew that this is what is going to cause him to be perpetually under the feet of man. Man is going to rule him and control him. As a result, he plotted a way to circumvent the word of Yahweh, to make, make sure that man disobey Yahweh, to make sure man will not go the way Yahweh appointed him to go, that is to be obedient. As a result, man succumbed to the advice to the instruction. It was advice because Satan didn't force man to fall or to sin. But all he did was to trick him, cunningly trick him to dishonor Yahweh's word. As a result, man failed. Now listen to Yahweh. Genesis chapter 2, verse, verse, I read from verse 15. Then Yahweh yeah, spoke or took the man, sorry, Yahweh or the sovereign Yahweh took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And sovereign Yahweh commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good, Yahweh gave him only one source of knowledge, good. And evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So Yahweh gave man one source of knowledge, the knowledge of good. But he said there is a tree in that vineyard or garden or land that possesses two types of knowledge, knowledge of good and knowledge of evil. And this knowledge of good is called righteousness of Yahweh. That is the part of Yahweh. That is the way of Yahweh. This good or the part of good is what Yahweh constructed in the wilderness for them as law, as commandment, as his oracle, so that they should return to it Now, man didn't pay attention to the word of Yahweh that said, dwell on the path of good, on the path of righteousness. Then man rebelled. Now verse 17 says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So the knowledge of evil brings suppressed man from Yahweh. Death is as a result of separation of man from Yahweh. Yahweh is all that we need to live forever and ever. Because in him is the glory that covers man. In him is life that covers man. Bread of bread that he gave man was not sufficient to take man true and true to eternity. Man was like a work in progress in the hands of Yahweh. So he was still dealing with man, working with man, trying to, you know, at the end of the day, bring man to the position where he's going to live through eternity. But man was not patient enough, or man 
was not clear to follow the instruction Yahweh left to him. And as a result, he fell prey to the doctrine of Satan. And that chapter 3 is where it happened. We are told that Satan was very, very tricky person or uh, spirit. So now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which sovereign Yahweh had made. And he said to the woman, so Satan went to the woman, the weak vessel, so that he can obtain the man. Because for him going through the man, he wouldn't have succeeded. He would have found it tough. So the, the woman easily gave in, listened to Satan, and what was the project of Satan? The project of Satan was to cause them to eat from the fruit of the tree. Verse 3 says, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Verse 5, this is, this verse 5 is where Satan hammered human beings and caught human beings to follow his trajectory, to follow his evil way. For Yahweh, it says in verse 5, for Yahweh knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like Yahweh, knowing good and evil. Does Yahweh know good and evil? Yes! But Yahweh limited man unto righteousness only, not on the side of evil, because man was still a work in progress. He will not cope. He cannot, you know, be able to escape from anything. Anything that has to do with evil cannot escape. But there was rebellion. But somebody will ask, doesn't Yahweh know that man hasn't got the strength or the grace or the power or the enablement to overcome That's the evil and everything that is there? Man was a work in progress. Man must be clearly worked out to be outstanding. So Yahweh allowed him. Yahweh knew he would fall. Yahweh knew where he was going. Yahweh, but Yahweh had walked out the end of man. And that's why I said that he gave us the seed of the woman who had been with Yahweh from the beginning of times, even before creation. To do what? To save man. And by the time man will be completely, it's a long process man had to take for his complete redemption. Man didn't wait for Yahweh to finish the work he was doing. Then man failed. Yahweh allowed it to happen. And to prove Satan wrong still, to show to Satan that he has no place in Yahweh, that he, his rebellion, his disobedience, which was incurable, which he cannot do anything to help himself. That at the end of the day, Yahweh had given him opportunity and time and allowance to, you know, make a mess, but he couldn't because he he was leading himself to destruction. Satan was leading himself to destruction. destruction. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh allowed Satan and allowed man to slug it out. But Yahweh had, had the key, had the end result. He knew how to save the seed of the woman. And at the end of all this story, only remnant of the seed of the woman will be saved. And they will repre still represent mankind. And through that seed, the remnant seed, Yahweh is going to build the earth as he wants. 
by that time easily. I mean, Yahweh will cut off evil. Yahweh will cut off Satan. Yahweh will cut off every temptation that had caused man to fall. A man will be empowered beyond any imagination. Man will be empowered, elevated, if not above angels. Because they are going to be sons and daughters of Yahweh. So, man is still a work in progress. So, at this particular point, in verse 5, man failed. Now, let us look at what happened. The separation that came. How man lost the glory of Yahweh. How man lost sanctity of life. How man lost his place in the garden. How man lost even his life temporarily, so to speak. Because Yahweh gave a clause in verse 15. There is a, a clause there that Yahweh was coming to redeem man so that the trouble of eternal death will be removed from those that will believe. We believe his word. It's still his word. Now, let's look at verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they saw, they saw fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. What, what happened? The glory of Yahweh had left them. Everything about Yahweh, that relationship, that closeness, everything is gone. How did they discover they were naked? How did they discover that they, they, they are now covered with evil? Sin had taken over. Now, see what happened. Verse 8. And they hear the sound of the of Yahweh, of sovereign Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of sovereign Yahweh among the trees of the garden. Then the sovereign Yahweh called to Adam and, and said to him, called Adam, not if now called Adam, where are you? So he said. I hear your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Why was he afraid? Anybody that has peace in his life can never be afraid of anything. At this time, the glory of Yahweh had left him. The peace of Yahweh had left him. Fear had taken place. Death was swinging before him. So he was afraid. Now, going forward, they said, verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of, of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And Yahweh Almighty said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So Sovereign Yahweh said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. Now, what you see is, each of them began to pass blame. Oh, Yahweh, I blame you. You can be the woman. It's like Yahweh troubled him and said, Adam, I have this woman. Here we read that Adam said to Yahweh, the woman you gave me. Suggesting that um, <laughs> Yahweh that brought the problem. Was he trying to pass the buck to Yahweh that he is the cause of the problem? Now, if what happened? It was the man, it was the serpent. Serpent began me. Blame here and there. At the end of the day, Yahweh knew who caused it. But why was 
Why did Yahweh judge Adam and Eve? Because of his word. They didn't pay attention to his word. If serpent had forced them, if serpent had, you know, practically any man brought them down to the point of killing them, you must abide or follow me. Yahweh would have destroyed Satan instantly there. And Adam and Eve wouldn't have, you know, been, been sentenced. But because they bowed. And that's why we must be very, very careful. Because the word of uh, the word of Yahweh says it all. The word of Yahweh is, is our, you know, if you like, is our compass. It's all we need to move in our way, in our journey. Without it, we can move an inch. Without his word, we can't do anything. And his word is his presence. That's why he said, Yeshua is the word of Yahweh. So when we obey the word of Yahweh, we are showcasing the love we have for Yahweh that is in the son, Yeshua Messiah. So he delivered to man again his word. And that came all the way through to Noah, to Abraham, even to the children when they were returning from the land of Egypt. The fall of man was as a result of disobeying Yahweh's word, Yahweh's instruction, Yahweh's commandments. And that brought about human being being judged and being told he's going to die. But in 15, Yahweh said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is the first time Yahweh mentioned about the deliverance of man, deliverance of human being, from what Adam and Eve caused, the death they brought about mankind, in the life of mankind. Here, Yahweh put this clause that sometime, someday, going forward, he will do it. He will send in a seed through time to the period or you know the, the, the time of Noah to the time of Abraham, we saw how Yahweh sought this seed out through the loins of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob going forward. This seed came in the person of Yahshua. And Yahshua came, preached the same gospel, preached the same message, message of the kingdom, message of the word of Yahweh, to, for us to eat the word, heed the word, listen to the word, live in the word. But ask me today, what happened in the time of Adam, Adam, the time of Noah, the time of Abraham, is still what is happening today. It is even worse today. Israelites don't know who they are. Today, Israel, the worst thing is that they don't even know. They've lost their identity. They rejected their Messiah and flung to the Gentile Messiah, worldly Messiah. And this is, you know, found in different religions. These messiahs are found in different religions. Because Satan created, used what is called religion, worldly religion, to do what? To cause more or serious evil that brought people completely away, took people away from the truth from Yahweh. And as a result, Israelites are wallowing in darkness. Israelites are groping in darkness, in pain, in trouble. 
And the word of Yahweh says, anybody that destroys the word of Yahweh is wicked. And the person will not have peace. Because to every evil person, wicked person, there is no peace. Because Yahweh is not in him. Yahweh is peace. Yahweh is not in the person. In Genesis 11, 4 to 9, let's look at Genesis 11, 4 to 9. Let's give me a sec. Um, now let's go through that. This is 11, 4 to 9. They said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven and let us make for ourselves a name. Why name? They want to make themselves a name. This is forsaken Yahweh. What about the name of Yahweh? What of the glory of Yahweh? What of the presence of Yahweh? No, they want to <laughs> create a name, create a people, create themselves, the world of their own. They want to live outside Yahweh. Why do we separate ourselves from Yahweh? This is the beginning of Babylon. This is where Babylon that we talk about in Isaiah 47, um, Jeremiah 50, 51, and so many other places, this is where it began. This Babylon of old today is still very, very much out there, even in America. Though Babylon is everywhere, all over the world, because they have all the instruments of Babylon working in their nation, in their country, through which they govern themselves, their rules and their law are applying. Now, they want to make themselves a name. Otherwise, continue. Otherwise, we will be scattered abroad over the face of the whole world, the whole earth, that which they feared come upon them. Because at the end of the day, this Babylon now spread all over the world. Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Yahweh said, Behold, they are one people, and they, will, they all have the same language. And this is what they began to do. And now, nothing which they propose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and they are confused their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from there over all the face of the earth. Yahweh scattered them because they were united in the same and one crime to disobey Yahweh. So that was the common language they had. Not that the language of Hebrew or whatever language that was there is specifically what is being mentioned here. No, the language, the common language, the oneness, the, 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 to make a name, that, that common ideology, that one way which Satan has shown to them that is evil, that is what they know. A common language was in their brain, in their heart, in their spirit, in their mind to do, to act out to be against Yahweh. So they carried that language which they knew best. So Yahweh confounded them, every one of them, with all that they had in their brain. They have been brainwashed. Bow! They took to their heels. So there was formation of languages. And each one practiced his evil in accordance to his own heart, worshiping this only Satan, I mean, the, the one Satan, the sun God which Satan designed for them, they continue, wherever they find themselves, they continue with that. And that is what is invoked today. And that is what you have as religions of the world. So they scattered them, I'm sorry, 
So Yahweh scattered them abroad from there over the face of the earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there Yahweh confused the language of the whole earth, and from there Yahweh scattered them abroad over the face of the whole earth. Now tell me, what was the city they were building? The headquarter of Babylon, Babel. Now, there, we are told that there, there were so different kind of idols, carved images, all manner of things they were worshiping. So they gathered as much as they could gather, and they, as they were scattering, they went along with them. And that is what they have up to today. And that which they have and hid to themselves is what confused them and brought them into where they are that caused them to miss the righteous way. They are no longer in the righteous way. They no longer seek good. Evil and evil is in their heart. And this has plunged everybody into where humanity is at today. We must take cognizance that Yahweh, whose, whose name is love, is also peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace is the character of Yahweh. Galatians 5, verse 22. The rebellion of Adam and Eve was considered by Yahweh as wicked, that is, sinful. Based on act of wickedness, Yahweh withdrew himself, his glory, and his presence from the first human parents, Adam and Eve. This means mankind lost the peace they enjoyed with Yahweh. Although Yahweh's favor was not totally withdrawn from mankind, a promise to protect the obedient had always been there. In these later days, only those who pursue obedience to the word of Yahweh shall be protected and eventually be restored to his peace and to his land. Notice that the days are becoming more evil and increasingly wicked against Yahweh, even to his people. If you read Psalm chapter 2, that is very clear. They're against Yahweh, they're against Yahweh's son, Yahshua, and against the court of Yahweh, the people of Yahweh. So that is what we are seeing today. All that they did, all that Adam and Eve did, which stretched down to the time of Noah, going forward into the time of Abraham and up to today, evil, evil had been reigning instead of good. Good had been suppressed and they are continuing is, to, to finish good is a work in progress of Satan. He has been trying all he can to put good completely down, out of the way, because he knows that that is the character, the righteousness of, character, of Yahweh is his character. And all his children possess or must possess that character. So he wants to quench it. And the only way he can do that to succeed is to quench the law, eliminate the law, the Torah, the word of Yahweh. Take it away from them. They will not learn. Do not allow them to preach it to themselves. Do not allow them to communicate it. Do not allow them to read it. Time will come when they will chase people out of assemblies, out of churches where the Bible is read and all that. Time will come when they will chase people from holding the Bible. It happened before. Nations of the world have been pursuing Israel to that. Is it Babylon? Is it Mesa and Pasha? Is it Greeks? Is it Ro Roman Empire? To the point, the lastly, lastly, the Roman Empire converted Torah, converted all the writings and packaged them. They are there in St. Peter Basilicum. They are there in their archives, hidden. In the, there is a tunnel where all those things are packed today. Nobody can enter there in their library as God. You can't see it. Martin Luther was clever to cut 
with the Bible, saw the scripture, read it, and said, wow, is this what is written about who we follow? The Almighty. Then, he began to award the, the people, the world, and to those who will understand what he was talking about, they rallied around him, they printed the Bible, and the, to us today, that is, most of the things written, Israelites, the prophets, the, 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 the disciples, the apostles, all their writings are still locked in there, in Rome, are still locked in there. Because Rome is the last empire, so to speak, which is still on, going on, that empire is still going on. And it produced the it's like reversal is producing the letter Babylon, the great Babylon that is now teaching people the last onslaught that we tear completely the commandments of Yahweh, the word of Yahweh from people from following the truth so that good righteousness of Yahweh will be suppressed and completely be submerged, taken away. So the word is already in the days of their darkness, of their darkness. So we can see evil increasing by day, the wicked increasing by day, trying to eliminate everything that has to do with the righteousness of Yahweh. This will linger and escalate into total taking away of peace from the earth. But the test will start from Israelites. Then to the Gentile world, where the earth will be consumed in violence and war till the return of Yahshua to save Israelites from total annihilation. Matthew 23, 38 to 39. But this is what Moses presented to us. What about Micah? Let us see if they were writing the same thing. Let us see if what Moses said was what even Micah in the later days wrote. About the later days, Micah connected what happened in the days of the fathers, ancients, and what will be happening in these later days. Let's read the book of Micah, chapter 3, 5 to 7. We, we read it a while ago, but let us, you know, uh, <coughs> remind ourselves again of what he was saying. From verse 5, Micah chapter 3, verse 5 to 7. Thus says Yahweh concerning the false prophets who make my people stray, who chant peace, peace, peace. <laughs> Anybody who will ask for peace, look for peace, must ask where is Yahweh. What peace are they asking about? Yahweh said, put your eyes in my word, put your eyes in my instruction, do them. Then you will find me. I will be with you. I will keep you safe. I will work with you. And these people, call them false prophets, call them false teachers, call them false rulers. They will tell the people, ah, you have peace. And they come in form of prophecy. At times they come in form of fortune telling. You shall have wonders. You shall have wealth. I mean, your word is wonderful. Yeah, tomorrow is all right. There is peace all over you and all that when there is no peace because they don't have Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Just get what Micah is trying to present here. Listen to him carefully. Why they chew with their teeth? That is cause violence, trouble, war. But who prepare war against him? Who puts nothing into their mouths? Therefore, you shall have night without vision. Yahweh says, to you people who are wicked, who do not want the truth of Yahweh for his people, who block them, who preach peace when there is no peace, because they have not known Yahweh. How can they have peace? Said, you are going to have trouble. There you shall have night without vision, and you shall have darkness, that's obscurity, trouble without divination, that is prophecy, prediction, foretelling. Yahweh said he's going to take all those things that we are 
doing that time and even today and tomorrow is going to take them away. Those who are so-called false prophets, they are in trouble. They, they are in for trouble, no matter what they are doing. The sun shall go down on the prophets and the day shall be dark for them. So the seers, that's the prophets, diviners, fortune tellers, shall be ashamed. And the diviners, that's the psychists, mystics, spiritualists, all these people that brainwash the, peop the, 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 the people of Yahweh, shall be abashed, embarrassed, and shamed. Indeed, they shall all cover their lips, but there is no answer from Yahweh. Yahweh will not answer. No, time will come when Yahweh will lock up what they are saying, even the force they are presenting. The, the, the wickedness they are bringing. Yahweh did it in Egypt. Yahweh did it in Babylon. Yahweh did it in the land of Israel. In this letter, they is going to do it again. He's going to catch up with their devils, with their demons, with their spirits, which they you know, connive with the wooden stone they serve. He will block their mouth. Those prophets will see nothing. They will hear nothing. And that will be their end. And they do that with reasons, so many reasons. We are going to read, uh, Micah is going to tell us the reason why they do what they do. How do these false preachers have their way to deceive the innocent? They use the powers of de devils, demons, and all manner of spirits, which they invoke from Satan. They seek power from satanic forces to achieve their evil gains. In these latter days, Yahweh promised to fight these wicked false pastors, false prophets, false evangelists, false teachers, false rulers, false leaders, who manipulate people with powers of witches, wizards, or sorceries, soothsayers, etc., who dedicate their works to pillars of wood and stone and to entities they do not know. Now, Micah continued. In Micah, let's look at verse, um, verse 10. Um, verse 10, Micah, let, let, let me go there. Micah chapter. Just give me a sec. Um, just trying to figure out my chapter. Just give me a sec, trying to figure out where Micah himself made this pronouncement. Important statement which I just want to present uh, information there. Mm.
Well, I will, I will try to get the the Bible. I, I jotted something down there. It said, and it shall be in that day, says Yahweh, that I will cut off your horses from your midst and destroy your chariots. I will cut off the cities of your land. This was when, apparently, when they were in the land of Israel, you know, he made that. But all that statement was to say that, you know, when we connect it to what he was talking about, how he's going to zero into the later days, he's talking about pulling out vengeance against his people because they're going to be in the in the realm of wickedness on in the uh, apparently that's that's chapter five Micah chapter five uh, verse. Uh, uh, 9, 10, 11, up to 12. Yeah, from 10 to 10. from 10 to 15. 15. Yeah. Now, um, if I may read verse 13, I said, you are carved images I will also cut off, and your sacred pillars from your midst. You shall no more worship the work of your hands. Now, let's be clear. Let's absolutely be clear today many of us don't know who we worship that is the problem that is the trouble most of us don't even want to worship anything at all that is what we think don't want to worship anything at all whether you are aloof whether you have segregated yourself you have removed yourself from yahweh and he said about you are going to your church or going to your assembly or doing anything now with your you know kingdom something forget i'm a taste remember there is no vacuum in life mm. if you say you don't worship yahweh you must be worshiping another that is what some somebody in fact when satan deceived adam and eve the idea was that they will not worship any being at all not Yahweh, not he himself. As a result, they will be gods. They are on their own. You, you are your business. You mind your business. You are an entity of your own. You know, that's how Adam and Eve were brought out from the hands of Yahweh. They were made to believe that they are powerful. And they have gotten the realm. In fact, the whole earth was in their hands. They are in control. In control of their life, in control. There's no need subjecting themselves to the Satan made them to believe that worshiping Yahweh or serving Yahweh is putting themselves in the bondage, holding themselves into captivity. So free yourself, come out from him, come to the domain of evil. Just understand, have knowledge of evil. You will see that you are free. You have knowledge of good, you have knowledge of evil. You are free. Satan believed, I mean, Adam and Eve believed, they followed. And what happened? Only to discover that they're in a rope. It, they, 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 they have been trapped, enslaved. So they looked at this, they said they saw they were naked. How did they come and see themselves that they were naked? How did they notice they were naked? They have been trapped. They can't come out of it. They can't reverse what they saw. So as a result, they had to bow to Satan. So whether they do daily worship, weekly worship, monthly worship, or whatever worship, their life is subject to Satan. They like they go to their church, they like they go to their shrine, they like they don't, if they don't, don't like, they should remain in their house, sleep 24 hours, they worship Satan. They are binded and caged by Satan. That was the whole idea. Satan got them. And listen to what Yahweh is saying. Your carved images I will cut, also cut off, and your sacred pillars from your midst. He's talking to Israel. All these things we are discussing here said there is no peace for the wicked. Yahweh is talking to Israel. He's not talking to the Gentiles. So. Just get that clear. Now he said, 
you shall no more worship the work of your hands. It didn't say work of Satan's hands. Work of your hands. Because human beings have been given the leverage by Satan to do whatever pleases him. And at the end, because the glory of Yahweh is out, the presence of Yahweh is out, man, was in, man then was in his, on his own, following Satan, Satan roping him, enticing him, veiling him, now man become property of Satan. So whatever he does, he does it to the glory of Satan. So whatever man produced with his hand, he was doing it to the glory of Satan. But the good thing and the sweet thing is that the same call of Yahweh, if we hear the call of Yahweh and return to the true Yahweh, Yahweh will break that veil. He terminates that veil. Otherwise, you can't return to him. Otherwise, you can't cross. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, we are told that Satan is the God of this world that veil, veil them, envelop them, cover them with his veil. That they cannot understand the simple gospel of the kingdom, the truth of the kingdom, the ministry of Yeshua Messiah. They can't appreciate it. They can't comprehend it because of the veil. But once an individual hand over himself to Yeshua, that veil must be broken. In as much as the person do it in spirit and in truth. Now, man had continued to carve different images, do different, all the kind of things in order to remain perpetual in bondage, in bondage of Satan. And they make different kind of things. So enter in, into different religions. Some do not. Some do it quietly. Some follow mystic, mystic world. Some follow occultic world. Some follow all manner of, you know, some are following sorcery ways. No, Susaya kind of, let like just anything they want, they go and hear from Susayas, they're all right. They don't go anywhere. They don't, they, you know, different ways. At the end, they end up worshiping Satan, serving Satan. Now, Yahweh said he's going to de do away with all those. When is he going to do that? He's talking about the later days. He's going to cut all these off. Destroy them all. Then only those that will listen and they, they must be making effort for them to be saved. Only those will be delivered. All of that will be cleared away. Now he said, I will pluck your wooden images from your midst. Different wooden images, different in religions of the world. Look at the Messiah's people are flogging or following. Look at the Messiah people are bowing to, different Messiahs they are praying to all over the world today. Whatever religion. That is what Yahweh is talking about. Thus, I will destroy your cities. Beloved, <laughs> what is coming, what is facing the world is beyond what human beings can notice or see now. Yahweh is going to work wonders. Because in all these cities, in all these streets, in fact, at a point, he said, there are so many idols in each street that Israel can comprehend. Each street, let alone cities. So Yahweh said, because of their idols, he's going to destroy those cities. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury on the nations that have not heard. Even nations, this is the Gentile nations now. What Israel has come, because they are living in the midst of the Gentile nations. So the anger of Yahweh, the wrath of Yahweh will cut across. And Yahweh will punish them. For even, because it's in their home, they are the practitioners, the master practitioners of those idols. So Israel didn't only learn from them, but Israel became masters and, you know, learned to teach them the far away of handling the, their, their idols and the, whatever they bow to. Today in this world, false pastors, teachers, judges, rulers, capitalists, 
leaders, etc., because of their selfish interests to make money out of the people, they chant peace, peace, blessings, prosperity to people when peace nor blessings have been taken away from them. This is a false people contradict Yahweh's word so as to pervert his justice, lawful or righteous way, because of money. Because of money, they have caused many to drown. They promise one thing and do another because they intend to rip people off their possessions, their wealth. The preachers, pre the, the preachers present of the present nine messages with coded and fragrant promises in the name of Yahweh. Whatever they are telling you, whatever they are promising, whatever they are saying, they are saying it in the name of their Lord, the name of their God, making you to believe that is the God in which you have your faith in is the one executing the project. Whereas they are asking you to pay attention and have faith in Satan. Just to trap unsuspecting people, they do all this. In doing so, people are deceived and fall into trouble. Nevertheless, Yahweh has his word to the wicked. These false men and women would be plunged into darkness that would cover them, and they would never deceive Yahweh's people anymore. To this set of people, their wickedness will soon find them, find them out. Whether they be in Africa, in America, in Europe, in the United Kingdom, Asia, Australia, etc., they will be rooted out by Yahweh. As Yahweh was hot to the people of Israel in their land before he scattered them into foreign lands, so he is wrought and will be wrought with them in these latter days because they choose to choose not to repent and return to him. Now let's listen to Mike again in verse um in Micah chapter 3, 9 to 12, and Micah 7, 3 to 7. Micah chapter 3, verse 9, I read. Now hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob, Israelites, and rulers of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and perfect all equity, who build up Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with iniquity, her heads or rulers judge for a bribe. You see, you see, you see the orientation. You see their mindset. You see all the crave for life. Money, 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 wealth, 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 wealth. This is the cause of the whole trouble. Whether they are leaders, whether they are rulers, whether they are globalists, whether they are capitalists, whether they are pastors, whether they are in as much as they are fake, they are false. What they go after is wealth, possession, and money is the root of them all. Verse 11, her heads, rulers, judge, judge for a bribe. Her priests, pastors, teach for pay, and her prophets divine for money. Yet they lean on Yahweh and say, is not Yahweh among us? Now we put it in a very straightforward way because here Micah is telling us that Israelites are supposed to be worshiping Yahweh. So they allude everything to Yahweh, but indirectly or in the heart of Israel, they are worshiping another. It's not Yahweh. No harm, they say. That is no trouble, no affliction, no evil can come upon us. That is what they think. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed like a, a field. Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins, and the mountain of the temple like the bears, hills of the forest. So it says, even Jerusalem of today, wherever it is situated there in the Middle East, they call it Middle East, that land of Judah, that place will be plundered in in the future, 
by the time the enemy will take possession of everything and overturn truth, good will be put down. Truth will be put down. Righteousness of Yahweh will disappear, so to speak. Then, Yahweh will go into, will you call it, fights to retrieve his remnant, to deliver his people, to deliver his word, to deliver and to bring back his esteem, his revered name that have been trampled down. So he's going to cause good again to resurface. Righteousness will blossom again. So Yahweh will go into a fight. And that fight will escalate into the entire world. Entire world. That is what Micah is telling us. So Micah here presents exactly what Moses said. The same thing, because they have trodden the law, because they have broken the everlasting covenant, trouble shall come upon them. Is all hope lost for Israelites in these latter days? No. Here is the interesting part of Yahweh's promises to the obedient. Abba Yahweh promised to fight and save the remnant of Israel who follow his way of justice his lawful way of living, and who remain obedient to him. Yahweh will pass over the lands of the Gentile nations as he did in Egypt. He will pour his spirit upon the obedient people. But weak Israelites, he will tread down and tear them in pieces. And the wicked, the wicked teachers, the wicked rulers, the wicked judges, the wicked leaders, who afflict his people Israelites and take away their peace, Yahweh will go, is going to accost them, fight them, and destroy them. Yahweh will strengthen the hands of his people, those the believers, and their hand shall be lifted against your adversaries. That is the adversaries of the saints, adversaries of those who hear the word of Yahweh, who these wicked people are trying to put down. Yahweh will strengthen their hands. Brethren, what is coming in this letter this eyes haven't seen it before. It hasn't been told people what Yahweh wants to do for the remnants. He will lift them. He will empower them. He will pour his spirit upon them. He will, he will manifest in them in such a way that the Gentile world will be asking what is happening in our midst? Miracles are going to happen. Wonders are going to happen. All your enemies shall be cut off. That is the promise of Yahweh. The promise of Yahweh says that the enemies that fight you today, you that fight hard, you that work hard to pay attention to his instruction, said Yahweh is going to cut those people that fight you. Thus, Yahweh will deliver them from their hands and restore them back to their land. Micah 7, 8 to 20. Now, let's hear Micah again as he continued in the subsequent uh, verses. Verse 7, where we are coming from, all the way, look, at, look up there, said, Then the remnant of Jacob, of Israel, shall be in the midst of many peoples, in the nations of the world. That is where we are today. That's what Micah was projecting or looking at. Israelites in the latter day shall be in the midst of the, of the people of the world, nations of the world. Like dew from Yahweh, like showers on the grass, that tarry, that wait, that stay for no man. Israelites, wherever they are, they are on their own having hope on Yahweh, depending on Yahweh, staying for Yahweh, not for men, not for leaders, not for corrupt, wicked pastors, evil people, no. Nor wait for the sons of men, and the remnant of Jacob, Jacob shall be among the Gentiles, that is, people or nations of the world. That is where they are today, 
still try to tell us the same thing. In the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the midst, beast of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, who, if he passes through, both tears down and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. Yahweh is going to empower, that's what I was saying earlier, that Yahweh is going to power Israel so much so. In fact, Joel also mentioned this, that Yahweh is going to pour his spirit upon his people. That's where the people are going to be activated. But his people is going to be powerful. So anointed. That's why we have to train our tongue, our mouth, beginning from now. Because those whom Yahweh will pour his spirit are going to be upright, they are going to be obedient, they are going to be diligent, doing what Yahweh asked them to do. Instruction must be abided to. But, he said, who, if he passes through, Yahweh is going to pass through, like in Egypt, he's going to pass through. And none can, so, sorry, let me take that. But if he passes through, but dress down, and tears in pieces. When Yahweh was passing through Egypt, what did he do? He tears down and he tore in pieces. All that he pointed out that we are against him, he destroyed them. And none can deliver. Your hand shall be lifted up against your adversaries. That is Israelites, the obedient remnant Israelites are going to stand up against their those that surround them, that do not want them to go, that do not want them to be free. Israelites that time will have power. They will have voice. They will have strength. And they will break loose. Everything, every barrier on their way will be put down. And all your enemies shall be cut off. Micah 5, 7 to 9. Also, Micah 7, 8 to 20. Now, let's look at something that John wrote, John 14, 27, about peace. All we are reading since is that Israelites are not forthright. Israelites that are not upright, Israelites that are not abiding in the instruction of Yahweh will fall prey to sword, to trouble, that are going to be inflamed all over the world by wicked rulers, false pastors, false teachers, globalists, capitalists. There will be no peace when all these things are happening. They classify them as wicked people. Any lawbreaker is a wicked person. So Yeshua said in John 14, 27, Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is where we have draw our joy, our peace in Yahshua. Looking unto him, believing that he's there with us, believing that no matter what happened during the COVID, all of us that, you know, were with us, marching together, we are crying to Yahweh. We told Yahweh, he knew, he saw it, and he told us something like that. It's just a sign. The, the major things are coming. But yeah, we knew it in advance. So when we, our cry wasn't falling to him, it wasn't something that he didn't know. So he, he protected us. All of us that we are sincere to his word never had the vaccine. We are saying that taking vaccine is not good. No, we are not saying it's, it's bad to take vaccine. Not, not at all. But the truth is, if because in this letter that we we shall learn to remain in the word of Yahweh. The word of Yahweh is our healing, healing balm, is our, is our vaccine, the word of Yahweh. If we are deep down to his truth, to his way, following his instruction, his word will surely heal us. That's what he's asking us. And we should start learning to trust him, to depend on him. Because when the trouble will be down everywhere, people may not even see the vaccine. People may not see even drugs. Doctors may not be there. Nurses may not be there. Today, nurses are becoming scarce. A little of COVID that you know happened everywhere. 
nurses are scarce, doctors are scarce. Even it got it, it cut across all skills of human level somehow. I don't know what happened. Could it be that those people died, or many people have died? Today, I and my son, we are talking about, you know, those who are training people to drive, you know, drivers instruct or instructors, driving instructors. In as much as you can find them to coach you or train you, for you to go for the exam today is difficult because those who are preparing the exams are scanty. There are many. There are backlogs out there. Why is it that there are backlogs? So many things you have backlogs. COVID brought so much trouble. Today, look at prices everywhere, skyrocket all over the world. But major trouble is coming. So if we don't know or learn how to depend on Yahweh today, follow him, follow his instruction. How can we survive when the trouble exists all over the world? So Yahshua said he's our peace. The first thing that happens to any man when trouble of anything that brings fear drops close to him or her or in the environment, if the person don't have peace, the person will either be screaming or be shouting or be running hater skater. Fear will catch up with the person. And the end result, one well, may not know where the person will land. So he is our peace. In the midst of trouble, anywhere, any place, if you remember that Yeshua is there, Yahweh is your covering. No matter what is happening, you'll be smiling. Yes, even in the midst of trouble, you'll be smiling. And somebody will be asking, are you okay? Are you all right? Because you have the peace of Yahweh, the joy of Yahweh, the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is going with you. Now, when we look at how this peace will be taken away, because peace will, at the end, that will be really, really proper taking away of peace. Revelation 6 verse 4 provides answer to that. It said, when he opened the second seal, I hear the second living creature saying, come and see. Another horse, fairy red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. Mm -hmm. Peace will be taken away, brethren. Peace will be taken away. And that people should kill one another. When peace goes away, there will be hatred. Hatred will escalate. Trouble will escalate. People will hate one another to the point of killing them. Any little thing we, you know, we cause the spirit of Satan to equip somebody with arms to kill, to murder, to destroy. And there was given to him a great sword. What is sword for? Is it not for murder? Is it not for killing, for destruction? Brethren, if you can accept what the spirit is saying today people easily get angry vexation annoyance do you ask why all those are symptoms all those are signs particularly to the israelites remember this message is particularly to israelites Yahweh is talking to his people. That peace will gradually be taken away until it will escalate to the point where all over the world, the Gentiles will be caught up with it. Then there will be conflagration of trouble. War, sword, anarchy, disharmony everywhere. We better prepare. Because Yahweh said he's going to release spirits. He's going to release all those devils and demons that are caged. Yes, he made the promise that he's going to release them to fight humanity, to fight the disobedience. If that is happening, where will you be? Where will you be? What will be your, 
your response to the situation. Many will not even know. Many will not even understand what is going on or what will be happening around them. And as a result, they'll be swallowed up. So Yahweh is saying, no matter what you're going through today, no matter what you're passing through today, no matter what is fighting you, don't worry. You soon be going home. You soon be going home. Those that fight you today will surrender. You will defeat them. You will handle them. Let's close with Micah chapter 7, verse 8. Micah 7, verse 8. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, Yahweh will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and executes justice for me. He will bring me forth to the light. I will see his righteousness. His righteousness. That is what is Yahweh is calling us. Come back, return to my righteousness. Seek ye first my kingdom and my righteousness. And we are seeking the last one, the one that he said he will add. Word, possession, all manner of things. Did he ask us not to possess or gather wealth or money or be successful? Yes, he went to us. That's why he said he will add. But allow him to lead you. Obey him, honor him. Follow his instruction more than any other thing. Follow his word more than any other thing. Abide with him more than any other thing. Then he will help you. You will be successful. Afterwards, obeying the law, the Torah, is the way to prosper. Is the way to be successful. Is the way to, you know, have a good life. Is the way to live a safe life. Is the way to live and live above others. Yes, living above others is not to own the whole world. No, you have sound life sound mind you have everything going for you because Yahweh is with you Yahweh is on your side verse 10 Micah 7 verse 10 then she who is my enemy will see and she will cover her who said to me where is your Yahweh where is your father my eyes will see her now she will be trampled down like mud in the streets. Those that are laughing at you today, don't worry. <laughs> when the chiefs are down, they will be on the ground while you'll be on your feet going home, rejoicing, jubilating, because you have eternal life with you. You have the peace of Yahweh with you. So don't be troubled of the mock, of you know, the hurt you receive from people who deride you. Who make you angry? Who make you to who, who cause you to be destabilized? Who cause you to lose your peace? Don't listen to them. Be focused. Don't allow your peace to be taken away from you. Because even as an Israelite, your peace can easily. That is the target of Satan to take away your peace. In the day when your walls are to be built, in that day. The decree shall go far and wide. In that day, they shall come to you from Assyria and the fortified cities, from the fortress of the river, from Nile to river um, Euphrates, from sea to sea, and mountain to mountain. Yet the land shall be desolate because of those who dwell in it and for the fruit of their deeds. Shephardia people with your staff, shepherd your people. This is a prayer. The flock of your heritage who dwell solitarily in a woodland in the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old, as in the days when you came out of the land of Egypt. I will show them wonders, Yahweh said. He will show them wonders. When he took them away from Egypt, he showed them wonders. Brethren, that wonders will come again. This is the final days of human history. That is final days in the sense that Yahweh will be rooting out evil. The time Yahweh is going to fight evil. The time Yahweh is going to fight the wicked. Yahweh is saying that as it 
Israel were rescued as it was in the days of Israel in Egypt, so it will be in the Gentile world. This is second Egypt, and the second Exodus will be looming from there, and the children of Israel should be returning back to their land, because this is preparation for to restore them back to their land. Verse 16, the nation shall see and be ashamed and all their might, they shall put their hand over their mouth, their ears shall be deaf. When they see what Yahweh is doing with you, how Yahweh is going to rescue you, how Yahweh is going to work with you, the spirit of Yahweh is going to envelop you and they are going to be powerful. They will be amazed. They will be wondering. They will be surprised. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall crawl from their holes like snakes of the earth. They shall be afraid of Yahweh, your father, and shall fear because of you. Who is Yahweh like you? Who? No one. Pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not return his anger forever. At this time, Israel will be enjoying Yahweh because Israel, the remnant, is talking about the remnant, not the whole population of Israel that are wicked. I mean, the, the massive population that are wicked. He's talking about remnants amongst them, among the major popula the, 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 the population of Israel. Because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will give truth to Israelite, Israel, Jacob, and mercy to Abraham which you have sworn to our fathers from days of old. Yahweh will remember the covenant, the promise he made with the fathers of old. When he will be achieving this assignment, when he will be achieving deliverance, when he will be achieving restoration, when he will be giving Israelites back their, you know, their peace. Are you ready? Are you going to be part of it? Are you going to endure to overcome? Because a lot of rubbish is going to be thrown at you. It can come from yourself. <laughs> Once peace can be taken away from the individual himself or herself, Satan will come, his spirit will come in different ways to take away. Most times somebody is angry without a cause. You'll be asking, where is this anger coming from? For not just cause, a little while you are making mistake, a little while you are you know, saying all manner of things. You are fighting somebody. Somebody is fighting you. Watch out. Satan's spirit is enveloping the earth. And they are troublers of children of Yahweh. They are spiritual. They are working hard. If they are using human beings also to cause the children of Yahweh to gnash their teeth, to be angry, to cause even confusion to themselves and amongst others. So we must be very careful. We must learn to understand the time we are. Everything is being turned upside down. Satan is thinking he's achieving his cause, his, his agenda. That is getting human beings, roping human beings, tying human beings to himself. But he has failed. He has failed before he started. But you that know the truth, understands this truth that he always passing on to you. Why not to hold it, take it and run with it and never look back. Don't allow anybody to frustrate you. Don't allow anybody to stop you. Don't allow anybody to take your salvation or your crown. So do not allow anybody to take your crown. This race is not for the swift. It's not by your power. It's not by my power. It's not by power of anybody preaching to you. It's by his power. And that is why I said Israel, in this letter, that we look unto him, trust on him, and wait for him. Wait for Yahweh. And you will be restored. You will be blessed. You will receive your crown, and nobody will stand against you when the trumpet will sound. Or even before then, when Israelites will be returning to their home, you'll be part of it. I will be part of it. May Yahweh bless you. Father, give us heart to hear him. Father, give us spirit to obey him. Father, give us the willingness of heart to keep to his word every time. In these latter days, Father, fight for us, rescue us from affliction, from disharmony, from pains and weariness of heart, 
and cause your peace to return to us as you restore us back home, even in the land that was promised to Israel, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to Yeshua Messiah. Father, may this be our portion. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.